your your opportunity right now is really just to connect and establish a rapport during a very rough tumultuous time and try to keep that connection going so when they do make that decision they come to that you're there when they come out how you're going to do that you got to be careful on how you do it i do believe direct mails it's up in the air um, we've cut our direct mail back just because we don't want to waste money and direct mails always work. Everybody knows I'm a huge, um, advocate of it, but right now the people are just kind of collecting your mail and just setting it down or putting it in the garbage can. Hey everybody, Jamel Gibbs here. Welcome to another podcast episode. And today we have a very good friend of mine, very special guest, uh, who's a specialist in marketing and as you guys know marketing is the life blood of the real estate investing business if you're not marketing then you're not in business because marketing allows you to generate leads and if you're not generating leads you're not in business if your phone is not ringing then you're not in business so our special guest today uh, he has been in the business for a little over 16 years at this point uh, I've had a chance to get to know him over the last few months. We were quickly becoming really good friends. He's had a really good conversation right before this podcast, and he had me cracking up. So my eyes may be watering a little bit <laughs> right now. But, uh, you know, I'm willing to bet that most of you guys, if you've been around real estate for any amount of time, then you know the importance of marketing. But I'm also willing to bet that you've probably come across some of his marketing pieces uh, because they're widely used in the real estate investing arena. Uh, for example, if you've seen anyone using, let's say, handwritten postcards, chances are they originated with our special guest. Um, he's definitely a marketing genius. So we're going to talk about marketing in its entirety today. We're going to share some of Rick's secrets with you and share with you how you can get started driving leads into your business as well. So without further ado, let's welcome my good friend, Rick Ginn, to the call. What's ah, up? Thanks, man. I wanna, he was commenting on my uh, COVID-19 haircut. So uh, my daughter cut my hair, and I found out he has history as a, as a barber, so I'm like, I'm jealous. Like, I, it seems like that's the rage, man. Everyone's got a bad haircut on the internet, but not you. Oh man, I, you know, I've been cutting hair for <laughs> about 30 years at this point. So, I, I mean, I've been cutting my own hair for 20 years. And yeah. uh, so it hasn't been a problem for me, man. But uh, <laughs> yeah, man, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself? How did you get started in real estate? Uh, you know what? I, uh, I was working a uh, corporate job. I, I did uh, actually what my dad told me to do. I, and uh, I followed that plan and um Basically, after 12 years, it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. So um, I was always fascinated with real estate. Um, picked up a couple. Um, I picked up a book by uh, my first run in with real estate was a book by um, Rolf uh, De Roos. And he talked about basically a creative financing book. And uh, it was a book. And. I read it in like two days, which was a huge feat for me at the time. Uh, never, I was never a big book person at the time. Anyways, uh, I decided, I went to my wife and decided we were going to, uh, we just started having babies. And I said, you know, we got to do something else because this corporate thing, uh, handwriting's on the wall. So four of my bosses got fired over a 10 year period. And they were trying to work me up to, wanted me to go to like South Dakota. And uh, I'm a South Florida guy. Bottom line is I wound up going to a, uh, um, I responded to an, a radio ad and I went to a, uh, I get, I, I don't, you, well, they're not webinars. You, back then you actually used to go to a hotel room and they'd sit you down and pitch you. And uh, I just kind of dove in with a mentor. I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what they were going to do. And uh, um, so I had a game plan to quit my job in 12 months. And uh, the 12 months turned into six months and I made more money in six months than I made all year working 70, 80 hours a week. And so in 2000, I made that leap early 2004. By the end of it, uh, I went full time and I was 100% focused on wholesaling, nothing else. 
So my first two to three years, all I did was wholesale, meaning strictly assignments, um, quick in and out. And um, it was a lot of fun. And what, what I discovered when I did that is you got to understand back then there wasn't a, like I couldn't go and find like a, a Jamel course or um, there was no guys or gals on the internet to like figure like I was, you were lucky to even have internet service back when I did it. So what happened is um, I just focused on marketing. I'm like, man, the secret here is to get people to engage you. So my first three years, I played a lot with the marketing and it was like, how did you become such a marketing expert? So um, I listened to people like uh, Dan Kennedy, some other good copywriters, which we've talked about in the past. And I still love real estate, but it's like, I feel like honestly, as a wholesaler or anybody, really, you have two jobs. One's understanding real estate and everything you do. And the other is being a very proficient marketer. If you can do both, you can play in both ponds. If you only know real estate, you're going to have to go find guys like me and Jamel to get you your product to do what you need to do. And those guys, they have a huge disadvantage because they're at will of what the market, what they get. So when, when there's a shortage of inventory, like there's been recently before all this, yeah, I was just really surprised what people will pay for stuff. And like, if you just learn this skill set, you can do it. So honestly, marketing is everything to me. And so I've, I've discovered some, I think people complicate the hell out of marketing. Um, e even to the point where the data is getting really convoluted and like, what's this, what's that. And so what I want to share with you is just some really simple pieces that you can use today to make an effect on marketing. And this, this is 16 years of experience. Whenever I struggle, um, like we have a massive change right now, everything's shifting. I just go back to the real basics of marketing. And if you do that, you ask really basic questions. It's mind blowing. Every product I've ever created is basically at a necessity of me being pissed off that I can't get the results. So the biggest problem we have right now is now we're all accessible, which is dynamite. Us just being on this meeting, I don't have to get a plane and fly over to you. But the real enemy here is saturation. Mm. So I've learned that, what was, what was it? Um, don't go out and be a pioneer. Unfortunately, I am a pioneer. So they said the pioneer is the guy who's standing face down in a ditch with the arrows on his back because he went and took on the Indians himself. And then the really wealthy guy just figures out what the pioneer does and did a little bit better and he doesn't get shot with the arrows in the back. <laughs> so it's like, I don't want people, I, I would never advise someone to go out and do stuff on their own and try it because it's very expensive. Um, and I've had a lot of products fail. It's all about what your customers want. It's never about what you want. So like all the products that uh, I developed, handwritten postcard, you can Google it. I'm not going to bore you, uh, your, your users with the story, but it was out of necessity. How could I get like a letter card that looked like it was handwritten and get it done efficiently and fast? And we, I spent a year and a half testing the data. And so the beauty of all my products is that I use my business as basically a test lab and I test the crap out of it. And a lot of times people don't see it, and you know, I'll spend, I mean, tremendous amount of money testing data. And you, you know, I've worked on a project for over two years now, um, which the COVID's kind of changed it up, but it takes that kind of data, and we'll spend 50, $60,000 just to collect the data. Whoever gets that data first gets it raw, then you have something to go off on it. And it's, right. uh, so, like, don't go out and do what I do because it's expensive to be a pioneer. So learn from somebody who's already doing it, basically, right? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. So in the beginning, like, they go, hey, Rick, how'd you? I had to do it because nobody was doing it. So I mm -hmm. had to cut a trail. But it was expensive. It hurt. And um, you got to understand when you do a project like that, you're taking away from your business and you're yeah. probably losing revenue. And I'm brutally guilty of, like, doing that. But yeah. in the long run, it's, so it's paid off. So what are some of the methods that are working for you right now as far as marketing and driving leads in this market that we're currently in? Okay, so uh, we're talking about right here, uh, 
COVID-19 in the middle of May. And without getting overly technical, so here's a technique I teach is you got to think like your customers. So like, I I like fishing. Like it just, to me, it's, so I I was taught a long time ago, you want to go fishing, you got to think like a fish. Like, what are they doing? What are they talking about? You know, you send your bait down. So we're sending bait out there with a hook, right? And you got to stop trying to figure out what you think they need. And if you don't have data, just start asking questions from like old data you have. Mm -hmm. So the number one thing is a lot of people are out of work right now. They're stuck at home and they're scared. Like they're just downright scared. So it's, you know, I I see a lot of people right now saying double down. Um, That's advice of a blackjack dealer, not a real estate investor is. Nope. 100% 100% agree, man. Your, your, your opportunity right now is really just to connect and establish a rapport during a very rough, tumultuous time and try to keep that connection going. So when they do make that decision, they come to that, you're there when they come out. How you're going to do that, you got to be careful on how you do it. I do believe direct mails, it's up in the air. Um, we've cut our direct mail back just because we don't want to waste money and direct mails always work. Everybody knows I'm a huge, um, advocate of it, but right now people are just kind of collecting your mail and just setting it down or putting it in the garbage can. Um, so you have your, you, uh, we don't do RVM in the state of Florida. Um, it's efficient, but, um, here's the problem with the texting is everyone's using the exact same message. You know why? Cause I get, I get at least three a week. Now I own property and uh, I'm like, my God, the problem is we've gotten so used to duplicating what everybody does. That's all, like, we're like little robots and machines. So why not just send out like a, a, a test split on like your SMS? So we've done a lot more creative stuff with us. But I'm saying if you're going to use some SMS, don't be the, Hey, I want to buy your property. You know, let me know if you're interested. Because that's what 95% of the, of the people are taught out there. You need to throw in like an engaging question. I'm not talking about like just uh, trade bait type of deal. Just throw out a, a, a more open-ended question type of deal. You know, not do you want to really sell your well? house? What's been working really well, and I've even been caught by this myself. Uh, someone would just type me, hey, Jamel, you know, and then an exclamation point behind it. Just to get the conversation started. And you're like, Who's this? <laughs> and then so, you respond. Exactly. You know? So what I'm saying is it just, if everyone would do something a little bit different, we all wouldn't have as many problems. A, a lot of these uh, carriers are blocking our messages because we're, right. we're so, saturation is, it's killed our VM. It's going to kill um, voice broadcasting. Yep. In my theory, I hope it's not true, but I think they're going to wipe out SMS. I hope they don't. But eventually, so you notice all these tips. So, um, and then back to cold calling with like the DNC that started a long time ago, back in the 90s, I think, or early 2000s. And you see a pattern. You piss your customers off enough, yeah. they'll shut you down. And that's kind of where we're, it's almost like we're going back full cycle where yeah. like mailing is going to be the only legal correct channel to do stuff, which is kind of ironic because you've got to pay the government to do it. So the, the main thing I look, have you ever gotten like a mail piece where I swear to God, you got even a postcard. I got one recently. It took me five minutes to read the front and the back of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There, there's no, like you got to leave something dangling for your customer. Um, so like he, here's an example. I, I'm not going to give like all my, my trade secrets away here, but um, so on like an SMS, did you get my contract? Question mark. Jamel, did you get my contract? They're going to contact you every time. What contract, you know? So we're just trying to, so my goal with marketing is it has one goal. And if this is the only thing you take away from there, your goal is to engage your prospect ethically. That's it. I don't care. Just don't do the trade bait stuff. Now I've tried some crazy stuff in the past, the uh, urgent notice, final notice. Um, You will invite problems from the U S post, uh, Postmaster General, that's the guy's name. Um, I've, unfortunately, I got to know him on a first name basis back in 2000, 
10 because I tried in a crazy marketing scheme and it blew up on me. I did one with the check, you know, like the little check. Here's your yeah. check. Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. So you can actually draw out the, the wrong type of attention and get really negative. And you can actually get negative press. You can actually wind up in the newspaper and wrap like that. So your main goal is to engage your prospects. So if I'm going to go SMS, how can I engage them legally, ethically, and just at least start a conversation? I want to try to start a conversation to be able to qualify them, and that's it. So I'm going to engage. If you don't engage, don't worry about the rest of it. It won't work. So don't try to take if you if you're doing a letter or like you're even dropping off a uh, something at the door. You've got to give your prospect a reason to call you, engage exactly. you, go to your website. So the simplest thing is think like your customer, and your job of whatever marketing piece you do, if it's cold calling, SMS, RVM, VP, or uh, direct mail, is to have them reach out to you. Once they reach out to you. It's like that, long. but if they don't reach out to you, you're a dead man walking, and that's the biggest thing I tell people. Like, how is your prospect going to engage you? And it's it's simple as that. On direct mail, I'll tell you this: less is more. I, I've done the full the full print ad thing. It's the, and I think we way overthink so, our marketing pieces too. Yeah, definitely. Let, let's talk about that for a second because that's an inter, that's interesting right there. So most people are terrible, let's be honest, most people are terrible, like atrocious at writing copy or they'll just copy somebody else's stuff, right? What, are some yeah. of the, what do you think some of the biggest obstacles are? Why do you think that's the case? Why do you think most people are so bad at writing copy? Even when they use, um, what, what would be some basic principles they can use to become better at writing copy? Okay, so uh, take the first one, as I said, Think mm -hmm. like your customer. What what would like motivate you to call somebody? Um, we've even gone. I've gone like deep discussions on this. When I first started, everything we did was a recorded voicemail. Mm -hmm. Like honestly, if I got back to you in a week, you were lucky. <laughs> I mean, I I didn't know how spoiled I was. I swear to God, I mail out five hundred postcards, and we get like a thirty percent response rate. I'm just like, wife goes like, you got these three hundred people to call, and I used to like crap i would love to have those problems these days it's more yeah. like you know fifteen thousand marketing pieces you got 30 people to call back sometimes more competition um, these days so the the challenge we're we're, we're talking about how to be how if you're going to do copywriting i think people just you got to just ask like some basic questions so here's the biggest thing here was one of my biggest aha moments in a recent marketing piece i'm putting together I took the data, of, uh, we went back six months and we, we picked a, a time period because the market has been changing. If you're in wholesaling right now, there's a lot more competition, even during this COVID-19. And so we log every one of our responses from our customers. We have a drop down box. So if it's a VA, if, um, and by the way, I still answer phones sometimes because I just like to know what's going on. I like to know I can still like, kill it if you know what i mean and then uh zach's uh heavily involved with it and then we have vas and then you just log the data and it's like here's the problem is um we're all we buy houses guys and what do we do how do we buy them we buy them for cash <laughs> we close quick uh you know it's like it's the exact same jargon this on is, every yeah. postcard so if you don't believe me just go to your next appointment's house and just ask for their most recent postcards and so I've always used my appointments as a, a chief intel. Um, we gather all the postcards and now I get a blueprint. I get to see what Jamel's doing and like, oh crap, he's doing this and I'm doing that. And it's a huge wake up call for us. Yeah. And so the biggest thing is you send people postcards, say we buy houses cash and then they call you. And it's like, I feel like people kind of get in a fight with them because what's the biggest thing they say? Well, how much are you going to offer for me? I'm like, I don't know. And then they, they, they struggle with the conversation. Um, the ad copy, so the, the easiest way to be an, uh, a copywriter is just go out and look at the stuff's out there and go, how long have these guys, guys and gals been doing it? And what's the little bit of twist I can do? Maybe it's not that you have a really a different service. The idea is what will make me, if this prospect gets 10 postcards, how are they going to call me? 
So here's things I thought about when everybody was mailing, mm -hmm. what are they four and a quarter by five and a half inch postcards? I tried the like six by four postcards. It didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. It seemed more commercialized. I've tried the, you know, the big fat business approach to the personal one. I, I, I can assure you the personal one works hands down so much better um, than the other one. And then the, the biggest problem is I see when people go with the blank slate. So you like, you know, when you go in a word document and you pick blank document. Yeah. Brutal, man. Brutal. Cause your mind just like starts, you're trying, because here's the thing is I can take your postcard, you can take mine. And so we have certain um, little things that make a huge difference on the postcard. So you know how the eye looks at something quickly and passes judgment on it. If you think it or not, you, you make your, your subconscious mind makes an instant decision if it's garbage or not, mm. especially on mail. So here's a little key is it's slight little spin and then just placement. So I can take your placement markers on there. So like a little secret, handwritten postcard. My God, I should probably roll that thing back out sometime. I built that with the original intent that you can modify the ad copy so you don't get stuck in this rut. I still get people complaining all the time. I sold that thing for like $47 when I started. It is still one of the most effective tools out there. But here's the key is I gave everybody the place markers. And then did you know that your sign off at the end makes a tremendous difference if they're going to reach out to you or not? So what we did is uh, I said, you know, typically you'll do sincerely, thank you. You put like a comment and Jamel. So what we did is we took that and then we turned it slightly sideways because that's how, if you're doing an impersonal postcard. And then uh, we tried um, nine different salutations after a year and a half. The one that hit the most that got the best response was God bless. And it wasn't God bless you. It was God bless. Wow. I don't know why, but it's a very neutral convert. Uh, it's, you can't get pissed off by me saying God bless. <laughs> you just can't. So the problem is if, if you if you make it um, sincerely sounds like something um, like a formal letter would write mm -hmm. you right. truly. Um, so do yourself a favor, go out, look at all the handwritten postcards out of the market. Everybody's copied what I did. The reason they did it's because it worked. So here's what you do. Take the stuff that works on the placeholders on any type of ad copy you do. And then you can kind of put your own spin on it. Cause what I find is, Unless you say something so crazy or put too much information on it, uh, most people hear you out that need the services you need to follow up. Right. And the other difference I did is um, we switched from voicemails. Um, when I was taught, we were taught to leave a two-minute recorded message. And then if you had an interest, you'd push the button and leave a message. It doesn't work in my market anymore. So we've gone from highly recorded messages to voicemail to now um, we answer live, man. Like we're... So we have uh, VAs that help us out um, 10 hours during the day, and then we rotate the phones. And so with technology, we have amazing service. So our call rail lets us, um, the call will go, uh, if the VA misses it, then it'll go to Zach, um, then my wife, and then I'm like the catch-all. And then we all rotate um, Saturday and Sunday, which we love. But we're, we're not 24 hours a day, but like long as I'm awake, if we can answer a call, that one call can be a thirty or forty thousand dollar deal. So, place markers to me is everything. So, like alignment into that, and then you can change a little bit of the ad copy. I would get away from the just one hundred percent we buy houses cash because I think people. You remember? Let's think Sounds back. Too remember, keen, man. It's a it, that's yeah. a key message. Everybody's using it, and you're not going to stand out at all. So yeah. here's here's a great exercise. If if you're if if your people want to learn. Take a bandit sign. I started on bandit signs. I still love them to death, but they're a pain in the butt. <laughs> a bandit sign is a very, very, dude, you want to talk about very little room for an ad copy, right? So when I had a RIA, um, I, I ran the, the, the largest RIA over here in, uh, in one of South Florida is, we used to take, um, we'd have a contest and, and 10 people would volunteer and then we'd make up, break them up in group. And when you give somebody a blank bandit sign, I don't have one here, watch the look on their face and you give them a black marker. They're like, what do I do? <laughs> and I give them three rules. There's just, there's, 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 
three basic concepts with, with a band design. You only have three lines. It doesn't fit any other way you do it. You got to keep it simple. And one of the lines actually has to be your phone number. And then we found you can't write on the back of it because in the glaring sun, they're making the signs so much cheaper. You can see through them and, and it convolutes the message. And uh, we used to do like a $50 giveaway and uh, man, to watch people struggle with it. Actually, I should probably just record a video for you and show you the exercise. It's absolutely amazing. And then you go, what's the most important thing you're trying to drive home now? Then they had to do a cheat sheet, do your reconnaissance on every other bandit sign. And as soon as I tell you to look at every bandit sign, your eyes just, you go around your town, you're like, holy crap. And all I do, like a little exercise is go around and we just take pictures of all of them. It's how we um, connect with local investors. It's actually one of our biggest lead generating strategies because most of them don't know what they're doing. And then we look at their signs and then we just, we just reverse engineer it. So if your job is just to engage the prospect, what are you going to put on a bandit sign? Are you going to put, we buy houses fast? <laughs> it's not enough anymore. Sounds you like gotta, everybody like, else, man. Remember yeah. the guy, who, who's the guy that broke the, uh, the four minute mile, right? I could, for a hundred years, nobody could do it. Soon as that guy broke the four minute mile, everybody 36 people yeah. broke it. Yeah. Okay. So you got to stop doing the we buy houses blah, 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 and with the recording. So we never put, uh, uh, the, the last rule is never put your own cell phone on the, on the sign and yeah. check with your local ordinances. So what, uh, what, what are some of the things that newbie real estate investors should keep in mind when it comes to marketing? Uh, you know, as, as I said, just keep it simple and then you got to work within your budget. So don't just go out and watch. I mean, it's amazing information out there now, like you, me, all these other people out there. And you're going to hear about all these. I got a skip trace. I got a, I got a, I got a, I got a, what do you call it? I got a, I got a list stack and I got to do this. I got I go, listen, start easy. If I'm starting out tomorrow, here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this pen and pad. I'm going to go out and I'm going to collect a hundred addresses of problem type properties. It's that simple. You yep. guys way overthink that crap. Because yep. when I look at it, a lot of my marketing, I look off direct mail, SMS. Um, they all have a common denominator. The house is a little bit rough. You pull up, you're like, how the hell would we miss this? Um, if you just did like a driving for dollars campaign, you would be amazed at what you can do. You know what's interesting about that? You know, when we first started, you know, I started in 2002. You started in 04, I believe you said. And, you yeah. know, when we first started, like you said, no internet no uh true guidance you know we didn't have list stacking we didn't have all the software and everything else that you know it's so easy to get started these days we did it old school and ironically that stuff still works even right, right now you know most people miss the boat they 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 misunderstand what it's all about get creative drive leads get deals period so with 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 that in mind if we had to provide let's say a 3 or a five-step process for our average listener, whether they're new or uh, they're a little more advanced to run a successful marketing campaign and drive leads into their business. Understanding that marketing uh, is the lifeblood. Without marketing, you can't negotiate deals. Without negotiating deals, you can't make any money. If we had to give a three-step or five-step process to the average listener to get started on their first marketing campaign or their next one, what type of advice would you provide? So it's, it's this perfect timing though. So like during COVID, a lot of times when you don't have a blueprint, we don't have history, what's going on in today's world. The best thing to do is go back to basics. So if you ever played football or soccer, um, a good coach would tell you when you struggled, Let's, let's just, let's just learn how to block. Let's, let's get back to the core, you know? So if you did offensive line or, you know, anything like that, you just sit there and work on the most basic mechanical drill until you mastered it. And so instead of going out and trying to get in a seven yard pass, when things you, you get most frustrated, just go back to the basics. Yeah, actually this works. This is a little life hack that works in anything yeah, because you got so much information and you're looking for confirmation. 
And unfortunately, a lot of times we have confirmation bias. We want something to work that's not even working. And sometimes you got to pull, pull back and look at the data. So what, what you're seeing right now in real estate investing, especially wholesaling, is people are going back to things they know have worked tr time and true over time, and they're getting rid of the fancy um, toys. So number one, I'm going to give you the, the best CRM. If you're just starting out, don't overcomplicate this, man. Just, I did a yellow pad for five years. Like, I'm being brutally honest. I would write down, I had a tickler file. And so when I had to call someone back on the 25th, I'd pull that contract and I'd put it in on the 25th. That being said, and then you can step up to like a Google spreadsheet. Then when you make some money, then you can figure out your CRM. So that's like, there you go. I just saved you three days of like castle with it. Man, then I go the find same thing, man. Same thing. I used to teach people <laughs> 10, 12 years ago, and it's amazing how it still works. And then I'm gonna find probably the 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 I'm gonna start with one and maybe go up to three lead sources that are tried and proven, and I know people have always had success with them. So and they're gonna be like brutally simple, but number one, just driving for dollars. You can fill the pipeline up 500 to 1,000 leads a month. Uh, it's perfect sweat equity, um, and it's great. You know, get out of the house, go out, identify properties. And you know what? The key with driving for dollars is eventually people do not purposely put blue tarps on the roof, let their weeds get six feet high, and let the garage door fall off. True. They don't do it on purpose. There's some sort of struggle going on. And guess what? When you try – so basically, I would collect that list. And then, you know, everyone talks about skip tracing. Skip tracing is awesome and it's convenient. But I'm going to be honest with you. When I started out doing this, I just go up and use um, whitepages.com, um, Spokio. There's some cheap, you know, $9, 10 services that you can look people up. It's a little time consuming, but you got to work with what you would. If I had to fill a 1000 instead of skip tracing, which cost you anywhere from 12 to $0.20 cents a piece, like just get rid of your excuse. If you don't have the money, just you got to manually go through and rip it and, and get it done. We did that when we didn't have skip tracing. I didn't have a choice between mm -hmm. me and a VA and we do it. Um, the next one I'm going to do is a really, really, really simple one. And we're having big success during this time is um, almost every property I buy has been on the code violation list at least once or twice in its lifetime. Um, here's a little secret. Code violations, they're making it more difficult because people are selling the information online. Um, with the whole COVID thing, they don't want you to come in in their office. The minute they think you're coming in the office, they will send you the damn list. Ask me how I know. We have had in the last two months a plethora of gathering information online. And the idea is if you can set – so think about this. Once this all goes away, which one way it will – if you can set up a relationship with that person just to be able to call them or a click of a mouse to get um, the code violations amazing. Before, we'd have to make two to three trips and clear a legal team just to get the code violations in our local county. Um, so that's, you know, I have a small county and I, I think we get a list of 700 people. We pound those. We have a lot of fun with them. Um, so that one, once again, you can manually skip trace it or you can actually go door to door and try to figure out what's going on. The last one that I have never stopped doing, and I started way too late, and I know which one you're, I'm about to say, is probates. Either, um, it's part of life. Really, people of course, people die with it. And um, it costs us about 100 bucks a month to do probates. And that's just a mailing. Um, we do between 30 and 70 leads a week. And we consistently mail to them. And we, um, you know, I teach people how to warm call them, not cold call them. <laughs> I was kind of against that in the beginning, but the data told me otherwise. Mm. And those three alone right now, to be honest with you, is the root backbone of what we're doing in our business. Um, we are doing some direct mail, but our direct mail is cut back about 75%. And we're trying some new techniques to really shake up the uh, direct mail industry. But I can afford those luxuries because I've, I've been doing it, you know, 15, 16 years plus. But it's the data is like all over the board. And like, so will people respond better to direct mail sitting in their home all day? I, we don't have the data back yet. Right. So someone, someone has to make a bold move to figure that out. nobody wants. So everybody wants to share it. So the question is, there's a pro cons. People probably aren't mailing as nearly as much. So maybe you're being hurt a little bit more. 
And but then I think people got too cute with the message, you know, sending out uh, COVID-19 postcards. I just don't. Like, I don't sell fear, man. I, I just, I don't believe in it. Like, you want to scare somebody in I didn't think deal. that was a good move, man, for people to sit out. <laughs> I mean, it's just uh, not smart. Come on. I, I just think it's, uh, you're trying to ride with the wave. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, Agreed, yeah we, we, so it's, everybody has different, you know, I'm not going to get into the, the, the Some people will do anything for a buck. Let's just put it that way. Some people will do anything. It, it's just like you can't kind of align with it. So really... Yeah probates driving for dollars and code violations and if you're just started start with one driving for dollars go until you get 100 leads figure out how painful it is to skip trace it um and you can manually skip trace it you can hire a va you can do it but uh, it's just time consuming that's all and it's you you can do it within 10 20 bucks but it's gonna yeah. you're gonna spend eight to ten hours to do it and get creative the other thing is we also do is um you can identify if somebody's living. So driving for dollars, you can take it to the next level. It's more than the address. Make notes. Is the house occupied? Is it vacant? And if it is, like one of the old techniques we used to use, and don't do this anymore. You got to go out and buy it. <laughs> we used to go by the post office and get like their urgent mail package, like the priority mail. And we'd stick our marketing piece in there. And you get like a 95% return call rate. Um, but that's been deemed... Um, don't do that because it's illegal because you're stealing from the post office, but you can buy these marketing envelopes that say urgent with it, that mimics the postcard. And they're about like a dollar, maybe a dollar 50 each. But listen, if I got like 40, 40 prospects that are living there, like that's a good mail piece. And here's the one thing I learned about it. Mm -hmm. I started out door knocking. Okay. Different world. Would yeah. you agree back? Like in, in 2003 mm -hmm. door knocking was like, Put I was just talking your, about this yesterday. Put some um, hair on your chest real yeah, quick. But, yeah. um, here's the problem with door knocking. Everyone's got these, these dang ring door bells. And it really creates some problems, man. It really like, because now I'm at work, the doorbell rings and like you're pushing the button. And it's like, what the hell? You, like everybody's so, um, I saw a comedy piece the other day. Like, uh, remember when you were like, you were a kid, somebody rang the doorbell was like, I got a visitor. Like the family was excited. It was either your, your best buddy coming over or the uncle stopping by. And now, like when the doorbell rings, everyone's like, uh-oh, someone's at the door. What do we do? Like everybody freezes. Who's going to answer the door? It's like, it's, and during COVID-19, it's 10 times worse, right? The last thing you ever want to do. It's like, now the FedEx guy's pushing the button and it's like, so here's a trick I'll learn, and I'm not even going to take credit for this. If you go to the door, so you're doing a driving for a dollar, a probates or a code violation works for all three. If you have that packet, it costs you a buck, buck fifty, put your letter in there. Um, you just put it at the door. If you want to ring the doorbell, like you're better off knocking. As you ring the doorbell, they're not there. You're going to bug them at work and you're just going to piss them off. So you have to actually knock on the door. Watch. Just like that. My dog's probably going nuts when I do that. Um, now, what you probably want to do is just leave and walk away. We don't want confrontation. That's the idea. But what do they do if they open the door while you're opening it? Because it's often people looking out the window. What do you do then? Here's the, here's the key part. Hey, listen, I was just in the air and my boss wanted me to drop this off. Um, he said, you know, this might, you know, he wanted to get this to the owner of the house. Either they're going to be very aggressive and nasty to you. They're like, well, what is it? Then you go in your regular spiel. So it's like a permission slip to leave the property without getting shot, in my opinion. Right. So we have to be very careful. I do not advise anybody just to go rawly knock on doors. It's a little bit riskier in today's society, especially during this time frame. So, Jamel, tell them not to go out and knock on doors. Don't but if you out. decide Don't to do it this, in your man. market, <laughs> have a release saying? lever. Have a release lever. Yeah. So you can you can just, hey, listen, I'm just, you know, I'm the uh, – I. What was it? I, I'm the uh, I'm the Amazon guy, right? I'm just dropping off the package. Yeah, Don't shoot yeah. me, you know. And then you can get out of there. That's but what I was going to say. Hey, yeah, but what if they actually want to talk to you? Like you have a bird. So when I knock on the door, you know what? Our it's it so bad. It's so bad. I used to knock on the door and say, "Hey, uh, Jamel, you the owner of this home? Yeah, I I can't help but notice your pending problem with this property. That was it, man. It was very like. I'm not behind. <laughs> now you are. It's just like we got in this fight. I'm like, this is brutal, man. 
And so I do love the package idea and uh, it works in all types of properties. Um, it also works when you can't get through to somebody trying to cold call, you yeah. skip trace and maybe you've mailed them. Just go leave that little extra packet um, on the door. What's in the package? What's in there? Simple letter. Just simple a simple, letter. simple letter. Simple. And, a, and, and a, just take, an take your size, copy. In an oversized uh, uh, post office envelope, right? Yeah. They're like, uh, you know, eight and a half by 11 and you put it in there. Don't steal them from your post office, but you can buy them now. They're everywhere. They they kind of mock it. You'll see like an eagle on the front. Yeah. Um, and and then you get like that little sealed thing on it. People just love that. They can't stand it. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. literally can't stand it. So when you put that on there, I guarantee they will open it up and they'll uh, engage it. Now, they might throw it back at you. Just run. Um, <laughs> but it does make a tremendous difference. We used to do uh, door knockers back in the day. They're not really effective anymore because all the pest companies, the yeah. – uh, the maid services, dog sitters. They're very aggressive, these dog sitters. My we God. Used to, we used to slide flyers right in the door. I remember one time when my wife was pregnant with our second daughter. Yeah. And, uh, we needed to go for a walk. So we went out and put flyers right in the door. While we were out, she went into labor because of all of the walking. But um, oh, and, we, and, and then we got, we got a deal from that and made like 15 grand uh, from one of those flyers. So, that, yeah, def- it, it works. It's effective. And uh, yeah, it's guerrilla marketing, old school marketing, but uh, you have to do what other people are not willing to do in order to get a different result from what they're getting right now. Agreed? And we used to take, yeah, we used to take uh, banded signs and stick them in um, vacant properties so yeah. we couldn't get a hold of homeowners. Yep. Same. Ooh, boy, do you get, we, boy, do you get phone calls. And oh, yeah. it's, uh, I, I don't, I, we stopped doing it. It creates, uh, it, as I said, it's a different world and people feel, yeah, they get the, the neighbors really get upset over it, and it's, yeah, uh, true. it's fun. But I, I think Jamel, like a lot of times, you just you break it down. If you, if you can learn the mechanics of doing probates, code violations, and driving for dollars, I start with driving for dollars. I would press hard on code violations, and then set up some probates are a little bit more work involved. And here's, I didn't do probates till two thousand twelve. 13. So I didn't do it my first eight years of investing. You know how I found out doing probates? My oh, accountant yeah. goes, you do more deals like that. I go, what do you mean like that? He goes, that you made tw- like 25 grand, which was a lot of money when I started. He so goes, you did four of told you? My accountant told me. And so we went back and me and my wife laid out all the deals and all our top 10 deals were, um, had a probate derivative, meaning- wow some sort of probate. Now we found them off other forms of marketing. So then I go, listen, I'm just going to rip, I'm going to rip the covers off on it and figure out how to do probates. And so that's how I came up with my uh, pri- uh, priority probate system. And um, here's the thing is I didn't even know how to do a probate when I did them. Like I was like, Oh crap, I got to deal with dead people. And like, and um, so the biggest help I had when I did probates, is when I have a problem, I'd bring it to my title company and they had a lawyer on staff and they just go, oh, no, it's no big deal. It'll take 30 days to do that. And I started answering questions. But here's what I did. When I didn't know the answer, I didn't lie to my customers. I go, you know what? I don't know the exact answer to that, Mr. Smith, but let me go back to my lawyer. Let me get you an exact answer. Can I call you back at two o'clock today? And uh, if not, I'll do a conference call. But after like a year, oh my God, like I figured out it was. Yeah. And now I'm pretty much an expert on it. And so probate. So I'm going to, I'm going to finish off on this with you. My, everybody kind of knows my probate marketing. It has a hook. It's much more than I want to buy your house is, did you know you could sell your house outside of probate process and cut through all the red tape? Give me a call. I'll show you exactly how to do it. The biggest frustration you'll find in a probate is the attorneys, at least in, mostly in the state of Florida, but I hear this part of the country is you cannot sell that property until the probate's complete. BS, complete BS. A lot of times these people get these properties and they're bleeding. Like I got to take care of it. I got to mow the lawn, the utilities, kids breaking into it. I got to pay the mortgage and the insurance. They can get permission to sell the asset. That money then goes to the estate. Now, it doesn't mean they get the money, but they stop the bleeding and they get the biggest headache off their lap. And, um, and a lot once of the again, times, I, yeah, a lot of the times that money from the, the sale pays off all of the uh, debt that was in the uh, exactly. state. Anyway. Exactly. And they can, 
And so it can, it can get a lot more advanced. They get distributions and yeah. all sorts of stuff. But it's like when you hear people that are distressed with probate, they're like, man, I, I'm stuck. Now you can't, I teach you, you can't piss off the attorney because he's just trying to get his fees going. And there's a lot of things we're not privy to it. Right. So we always try to work with the attorneys, never try to go around them because it's never going to work. But the idea what I'm saying is I have solved the problem of what they had. I found a problem in probates nobody was solving. And then I found a way, a unique way to marketing. Mm -hmm. So most marketing people is like, we'll just buy your house cash. We're investors. We'll close quick. Hey, listen, we're looking to buy a house in the area. And I, I know it's a difficult time. This probably might not even be the right time right now. But when you decide, give me a call. Oh, and by the way, did you know you could sell your house outside of probate? You don't have to wait until it's completed. I, we do this on a regular basis. I could show you exactly how to do it. Give me a call. So I don't tell them how to do it. I said, call me and I'll show you how to do it. And this is the first question. How can you do that? My lawyer said you couldn't do it. Huh. it it's, you can. Because you also know as an investor, if you wait to buy that house when it's coming out of probate, what's going to happen? Yeah. It's going to be Competition is going to be yep. thick. Yep. It's going to be gone. <laughs> and so man. to me Wait. is, if I can engage them and solve the problem, if I can get there first with the contract, who cares if it takes three months or six months, right? right. It's like if you plant this seed and it comes back and it grows up to be a $100 bill in 30 days, you okay with that? I'm fine with that. And I, I think a lot of investors are like when you try to run people over, I, I will tell you this. We're all about getting a contract, right? Like, uh, trust me, I want all my salespeople to walk away with a contract, but you've got to know when to stop pushing on people because the, I think people, I think we stop being authentic. I think sometimes, listen, I got into real estate. Guess what? Um, if you're really good at wholesaling, you don't really sell. Am I right? You just, you just solve problems and you're a master right. marketer. Right. You're selling, you teach your team how to sell and close and get the numbers up. Then it's fun. But like, um, I love it because I usually have 10 or 12 deals each week. And then I'll sit down with Zach and my team and my wife and go, hey, dude, give this guy a break. Like, you guys are pounding the crap out of him. Like, let's back off. And then sometimes I'll go on backwards and I'll, I'll, I'll do the total good list. I, I want to apologize. My son can be a little aggressive <laughs> and he's just, he has that, but I've been around the block, you know, I'm an old fart and um, I feel like we've disrespected you. And so mm -hmm. I want to give you a little bit of the space. What is it that, and a lot of times I go, man, and um, I get it all the time. Sometimes um, like I, we piss someone off and I have um, like the ladies, man, they're just better at it sometimes than we are. Like they, um, and then most people that don't sign with us, they're either working us, which I'm used to it. We're all used to that. Or, um, they're uncomfortable with something you're doing. They just don't want to tell you it. Yeah. So your job's to kind of unlock that. I tell people all the time, especially my, my, my crowd that listens to this podcast, I basically tell them, look, you're a marketer first, then you're a problem solver. And then you're a real estate investor in that very order as well. You got to drive the leads through marketing. You got to solve problems without being overly aggressive. And then you yeah. can make the money as an investor later. But I also tell investors is, you know, you got to push it. And then you, so I've lost deals pushing too hard. Mm -hmm. um, I've lost deals not pushing hard enough. So it's, it's a constant on moving balance. parameter. I can't tell you on a spreadsheet. You just, you instinctively learn it. Right. And I tell people like, oh, when do you think your presence are? Like, when you stop being a human being, yeah. like it, it, the guy is telling you his wife's sick. He needs to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So here's, here's what I always deal with it. I've been doing this 16 years. You've been doing it longer than I have. The, it's easy after a year or two in real estate investing, you go, ah, they're all lying to me, right? They're all liars. And that's pretty much the truth. Your job is to understand try to wear their shoes for just 20 minutes and understand what they're thinking. And either some of them are going to lie to you. It's just the truth. And you want to get rid of those people as soon as possible, but you don't want to get rid of all the other people that just, they're trying to tell you they're not completely comfortable with you and you haven't proven yourself to them yet. Now mm -hmm. I don't want to take six months, but I took four years for one contract. Now I didn't do it on purpose. It, they just, it just came back around because mm -hmm. I stopped pressing. And that's the beauty of it. They're like, listen, we liked you. We just had an internal family contact uh, issue. I'm like, 
So a big part of you talked about all the jobs we do, like the psychology is such a big part of what we do, but it's, yeah, it's a human experiment. Like every day you have to decide if your customers are lying to you. And if they're lying to you, we want to get rid of the ones who are just completely lying us for The ones that need more information, you got to ask better quality questions to get for it. Sure. That's it. For sure, man. So Don't we have, uh, we have get the, uh, the, the, uh, most inexpensive CRM, which at this point for most of you guys will be Google drive. We have multiple ways to find deals and then you just got to take action and, and make offers. That's your simple three step process today to go ahead and uh, get started uh, in real estate. Now, Rick, I, I know that um, you have, you know, a lot of different things going on right now. If our listeners wanted to get in contact with you, uh, where should they go? Uh, real simple. Just um, look up Flip with Rick. You can go um, on YouTube's the easiest place. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, um, and you guys can follow um, my journey over the last 16 years. And then um, there's the, I brought my son into business when he was 16, and uh, he actually just finished up college, and he's running full-time um, with the business. And he's probably the smarter of the two of us. I just uh, – I have more – I have more wisdom and uh, I, I did it before I, I was the pioneer. So he has the, the blueprint for it and uh, people like the way we kind of work. We just kind of, yeah, um, definitely. He's, like he's better than I am, man. Like I, I hate is, to admit that, but. <laughs> Jack is a beast, man. Especially how old he is just, he? What is he? Early twenties. He did. Uh, he just turned 20 and uh, he, he went through a, he did college and, uh, he did college in a year. He went to the University of Florida in a year and a half and got his bachelor's degree. Yeah, Zach is so a, just, uh, he's a he's a uh, he's a beast, man. Especially he's going to be a business mogul. Twenty years old, he's already closing wholesale deals. I'll tell you that uh, he's been doing it since high school. And uh, yeah, he's fun. So we kind of you know I, I share I share my ideas on there, and then um, Zach's just he's a little bit better with the social media. So. We actually use our business as our uh, our storyboard, so we kind of gotcha. share all the deals, and um, you know, here we record conversations, and uh, it's fun. It's it's a lot of fun, and uh, so mm-hmm. just check it out. We post on there like weekly, and then uh, if you got a question, just shoot it to me. I got no problem. Um, it's a little bit easier with Zach helping me out with everything. So that was good, man. Now I'm an avid uh, audio learner. I don't like to read books too much. I, I have to be honest about it. So me personally, I listen to audible a lot. Uh, what, I books do too. Are you, what books are you currently listening to or reading at this point? Um, so <laughs> the, the book list is long and large. So I do the audible thing. I, I've gotten a, a little bit addictive on like fast forwarding stuff. And I've learned I'm missing out on some of the nuggets. Mm. Cause if you go in like a mini mouse speed, sometimes it's not what they say. It's, it's how they say it. Mm. Um, but really in the last month I've been going back through um, the original Ray Dalio um, books. Um, I think principles of success. Um, he's, he's a world famous investor and yep. He's took an historical approach on the economy, on what's going on now to try to predict, try to predict the future. He doesn't know for sure, but he gives like blaring stuff that's going to happen over the economy of the next three years. It's a little bit complicated and it's just a run through of, of how the U.S. economy works and how it ties into the world. And the idea is trying to understand when the, the panic and fear will settle in and what's going to happen with, with the monetary system. Um, I tell you, probably one of the, the books I read in the last year that had a huge impact on my psyche was the uh, David Goggins book, which you talked earlier about, which like can't hurt me. Now, it's not a business book. It's about a psyche. And he basically says, when you think you're at your max, you're only at 40%. Wow, man. And he what goes, was, I can show anybody improve it. What was the name uh, of that? Can't, hurt, can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. I'm going to check and that out. It's just, it's just, it just teaches you about – you. Uh, you have a governor on your body and you're mostly on your mind and he teaches you how to kind of release it. And it, it the beauty is it can translate into um, physical fitness, business, um, spiritual, anything like do that. And so he says, when you hit your limit, you're only 40% there and they've proven the numbers. So he teaches you how to, when you're at your max, like when you're at your limit, you're upset. You're only at 40% of what the human mind's capable of. 
And uh, man, when you really grasp that concept, you're like, holy crap. And by the way, it, it serves the same for your relationship with your kids, your wife. And um, it was really like, I mean, eye opening to me. I was just like, and by the way, that book, you have to do, do it under Audible because he does like live interviews after the chapter and they go deep, man. Like they go, you know, they kind of talk to him. I've never heard a book done that way. And he did everything himself. He had all these book rights. It was kind of like the Rocky story. Mm -hmm. He went to sell it. He's like, nobody can tell the story. And he basically told me, if you ever do a movie, I got to be the actor. And I love it, man. And he's, he's been offered like crazy money. He's turned everybody down. And so, uh, He's on, he's on all over on the podcast and stuff like that. He's, he's broken. Like he sets a record and he just breaks it, even though they tell him you physically can't do it. I mean, the man was 300 pounds and he wanted to be a Navy SEAL in like 90 days. And they say, you can't do it. You know, you can't exceed a hundred. I think it was a 200 pounds. You can't be over 200 pounds. He dropped and it just, pounds in 90 days. Yeah. He couldn't, he couldn't read a book because he had a, a, a learning problem. Right. And so like everything's, it just challenges your mind. Like, what do you think mm. is your biggest struggle? And uh, we're, we're too guilty of reading um, all these, you know, you got EOS, you got traction books, you yeah. know, I mean, incredible books. Like I like to pick a, a book every other month that's outside of business and fitness for that part. And just do expanding. Now um, I am reading some books on meditation, but I'm struggling with it to be uh, fully just, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. And then, uh, it, cause so the, the premise of meditation is to guide your day is take 15, 20 minutes in the morning before you do anything else and do nothing but pose in a position and walk, take inventory of your thoughts. And I, mm. I go, Oh, that'll be fun. It's hard. I, I have a, I have a hard time with it. I'm going to learn this, but I find the most successful people always have some sort of meditation because it gives them kind of peace, calmness, and it lets them kind of organize their thoughts. So okay. if I, anybody out there can give me any suggestions on uh, meditation. So I'm excited. That's kind of a, so I always like to find new areas to go in and go, oh, that's fun. And like, yeah. you know, we, we've talked about fitness and, and how to eat and stuff like that. So it's, um, I got to tell you, if I, if I had to take one book, uh, so I've read the David uh, Goggins book. I listened to it three times. So it's 12 and a half hours, 12 and a half hours, but it's great if you do uh, driving for dollars, you're like, yeah. oh man. So uh, that, that's, that's what I'm on man. right now. What's that? University. <laughs> yeah, just don't, don't, I, I will tell you, don't play his too fast because you'll miss the point. Yeah. And that's the only problem I've learned, like kind of with some of the, all the, the techniques, oh, you can, um, I just learned about a service. Um, I got to get the notes. You can pay a subscription service. They'll take a book. Remember back in the days in your school, they had like cliff notes. Yeah. They highlight the key points of the book and they give it to you in 15 minutes or less. And they, so there's, there's basically, I don't know what, I, you don't call them a copyright or something. They pay someone, a professional to go through the book and then they'll give you an audio and they'll give you a, a text copy of it. I'm like, Never have to read a book again. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I never, I never, I was never good with the cliff notes. I anywhere. like the experience. Just, Me neither, man. I like the experience <laughs> of the book, man. So, uh, but it's just, see, we're always trying to hyper jump stuff like that. But like, I am like you, I read a book and yeah. I like some of the people that, you know, read eight to 10 pages a day. That's doable. Mm -hmm. um, but I get like a little bit tired in the eyes, a little bit, stuff yeah. like that. And I don't so listen I to use that. For like, my I don't listen to when music. I go to sleep. I don't listen to music. I listen to books when I'm working out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's kind of how I get through it. Myself. I do a lot of podcasts too. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's, it's fun. But like, sometimes I'm like, I'll start, um, like I, I go, man, I got to write that down. And like, yeah. so you're at the gym or you're at like the grocery store, like, you know, stealing a pen off the counter. I've been to the bank. I'm like, give me your pen. I got to write some notes down. Yeah. And then, um, the other thing I do a little hack here is, um, just, uh, on the phone, whenever I have an idea and um, it comes to me and it overwhelms me, I just record it. And now the dang thing converts it to text for me and organizes it. And uh, I don't even know how it does it. It's amazing. My mm -hmm. wife bought me this phone. I was kicking and screaming the whole way. So uh, it's, uh, it's really cool. I mean, the, the stuff we have today is just amazing. Yeah. But I will tell you, if you go back to the basics of connecting with people marketing and just remember your job is to engage your prospect ethically 
I don't have to say legally because I think that goes in with it. And then the rest of that is just put yourself in your customer's shoes for a minute. Like, do they want to hear the same crap over and over? You don't have to reinvent the whale. You just change the words a little bit. Um, Absolutely, man. Great advice yeah, today, man. Great advice. Uh, definitely uh, some great books. I'm going to check out myself as well. I'm going to uh, link those books in the show notes uh, for you guys who are listening to this podcast. Uh, if you're on YouTube, it'll be in the description box. And, um, you know, we look forward to having you again sometime in the very near future, Rick, uh, to share of your experiences of what happened after this whole commotion that's going on in the market right now and how, how your uh, marketing efforts are different at that point. Fair enough? Simplic yeah, simplicity will win in the end here, I'm telling you. There you go. Maybe just get, get down to basics and get it going. And, you know, maybe sometime we'll have to, like, meet in person. But I love the technology and stuff, but. This isolation's killing me, man. It's killing me. It's this me haircut, too, man. man. The hair. <laughs> well, no more COVID, COVID cuts, man. And, uh, you know, soon the shops will be open again and uh, everything yeah. will be back to normal. But, hey, man, I'm we look forward to having you again in the future, brother. Awesome. I appreciate you having me, Jamal. Thank you. Thanks, man. Have a good one, buddy. You too.